Okay. Right, um, I'm, I'm sorry this is, is a landscape feed. It's just, I'm trying to, I, I, I was doing something yesterday and I realized that, um, that I might need to share how this works. Now, it, in order to make this work and to be able to see your questions, I've actually had to set up another account so that I can view um, the PSCribe account and make sure that I can see some of your questions because I don't want to change the feed. Right. Okay. So yesterday, um, I, I, I was writing some letters to some people. Um, and you can see, you can see my little setup for the letters. You can see my little setup for the letters there. So those are the letters sitting in the rack drawing. And that's, that's the table that I tend to work at. So, um, hello, Melbourne. So I, I, I wanted to, whilst writing, I ran into a little problem. Um, and I thought it would be good to share this with you guys. Let me just grab some paper. So let's see if I can. So I, I'm sorry, but there's going to be a fair deal of moving around. So that's, that's a normal height desk. Okay. This is a normal height chair. Obviously I'm not a normal height person. So my legs are, my legs are bent as I sit on this little chair. My, my desks are a little bit higher. Um, to make writing a little bit easier for me. So if you if you see me not looking at the camera, it's because I'm looking at the next uh, screen so I can see the live um, and answer any of your questions and say hello to some of you. Um, so feel free to talk because I can actually see the, the questions in the right format. I will post this video on, on YouTube and I will also post it on, uh, on, on Facebook. Um, in the PS Grab Calligraphy Classes group because Facebook is, is, is being really difficult with the way we post things now. Um, but this is really important information that I feel that you need to see. So, um, right. That's a normal height table. I always tell people to put their feet one foot forward and one foot back. Uh, for those of you who've done my posture, uh, video on Shopify or the free video on YouTube. You'll find a lot of this information is there already. Um, but this is, this is some additional information that I feel that you need to sort of come to terms with. Now, if you're writing a vertical script like Textualis, I tend to sit here so that my arm is fully on the table. And with the arm being fully on the table, I get this movement, which, which is fine for me. I like my arm to be on the table. Lots of people say to me, oh, this is a problem. I don't like sitting like this. It's really awkward. Uh, because you are facing this direction and the script is vertical and the page is in the direction that you're writing, wh where the page sits, of course, that's in another video. Um, you can make vertical lines. Now, as soon as you turn the page, if you're trying to make a vertical line, you're adding an angle to it. So again, that's something that I've covered in the placement video um, on Shopify, as well as the free one on YouTube. So lots of people like to write at an angle. Now, if you're writing at an angle, can you see I'm slipping off the table and I'm in a really uncomfortable position and notice I've gone from my really good posture of this from here 
to slouching. So I'm leaning on the arm, on the left hand. So those of you who are left hand are probably leaning on the right hand. I'm leaning on the arm and, and I'm actually slouching over the work. So the only thing that can happen is really bad finger movement. So I don't know if you can see this. Uh, so that's just, you know, there's a little bit of a lag. So I'm just checking to see what you can see. Right, so you can see my fingers moving. And for most calligraphers, this is what most people tend to use. They tend to use finger movement. And really, you want to use muscular movement. And you can't really do that if you're slipping off the table. Now, this is what I found was so important to have to set up an entirely new account to show you, right? So, I found when I was sitting at my desk, which is higher, I also have a piano stool, so I'll show you that in a second. I, I was writing like this. Grab a pointed flexible nib. So I have some 55 degree lines on my black paper. I've turned the page now. I would never sit at this angle. I would sit here. So even with my correct posture, I was, I was here. Now, normally when I'm writing, what tends to happen is I've worked really hard at doing this, and I think it's something that you also need to do. Um, it's the exact problem you had yesterday. Oh, that's great. Um, illuminated scribe, that's great. I'm glad that, you know, having that problem is, is, is making you think, okay, so this is a, a common issue that, that lots of people have. So there are, not, there are not a lot of questions, which is great. I'm so organized. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, when you have this much stuff, you have to be organized. So normally I do, I always put my t-shirt out and I sit up and I roll the shoulders back, uh, get the chest up. Um, so I, in a classroom, I always tell, I always, I always tell the, the female students, look at the puppies. If you can't see the puppies, if you're only seeing up here, you're slouching. You want to see the puppies. So sit up, roll the shoulders back and lean forward from the hip. Notice I'm not, I'm not slouching. So, you know, women always say, oh, you know, we always struggle because, you know, we have extra weight at the front. And I always tell my female students, you know, it's great that you have breasts because you can use them to sense check what your posture is like. So if you are, if, if you are seeing the t-shirt the tenting at the front here, that's terrible. You really want to be able to see all of it. And that, that immediately tells you that you're not sitting in the right position. So you want to put the chair back a little bit. Because this is the same thing for men. Of course, you know, the only problem is we don't have anything to sense check. Um, so you want to lean forward from the hip. I'm, I'm still upright, yes. And... Right. Now, as you're writing, what happens over time is this, right? So, I, I found that I was getting really tired, but more importantly, it wasn't that I was getting tired that I found problematic. It was that the shape and structure of the letter forms were not nearly as beautiful as I'm accustomed to writing. So I put the tool down and I thought, what's going on here? So I started to really think, what am I not doing? What am I doing incorrectly? And I realized that I was slouching. Now, I always tell students that, um, hey, so I always tell students that uh, when you're sitting at a desk, the best way to sense check how you're sitting is to do that. 
So if uh, if your elbow is if your if your uh, the back of your forearm above your elbow, if it's if it's hitting there, look look at how low my shoulder my my, my, my arm is. And ideally, you just want it to graze that edge. If it's lower, you're going to be down on the desk. And that means when you're writing, you're going to be on top of the desk. And you're resting on the right, uh, the left hand and the right hand. So the only thing you could do is use your fingers. So the letters aren't really going to work that well because you're really sort of down on your fingers like this. So how do you get around this problem? So the speed is slightly problematic. Let's join this live again. Oh, pain. Oh, actually, you know, there weren't a lot of questions. So let's just sort of see how this goes. Right. Now, so I, so I started to think, where is my, where is my comfort zone for sitting? Notice I've, I've gone back to where I normally sit. I've gone back to my upright position. And I know a lot of you say, oh, you're such great posture. I've had to practice this. I've had to work at this. And I also have something that I've timed in my head that tells me sit up so every minute or so i hear myself in my head saying sit up so even if i'm sitting up i can still hear myself saying sit up because here to here is a little slouch in the spine so the spine isn't extended it's sort of squashing in on itself then the lower back starts to curve and then the shoulders start to lean in and then the neck starts to turn. So I have to keep reminding myself to sit up. Now, I'm going to show you what happens at a desk, right? Come on video. Oh, this is driving me bonkers. <laughs> I'm sending myself out, it's great. Uh, um, oh well, okay, so I'm sitting up, right? So this is exactly what I didn't want to have to do. Let me just get up and deal with any questions here. I don't know why this is not showing up. Uh, da, 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 da. <sighs> Technology, technology, technology. Exactly when you want it to help you. Okay, right. So there's not a lot of questions. Great. Right. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Hi, Rachel. So, we're here. I, I don't work at this height. So I'm going to take you to one of my other tables. So this is where I've been doing my research on my 17th century letter forms. So I'm moving from this little table. This, this little table very rarely has information on it. I'm actually just sorting out my, uh, my pens. So I'm going to take you across. Make sure there isn't any sensitive information there. There. And this here. So obviously, you know, Universal Penman. Uh, I know quite a few of you have asked me about my uh, 17th century letter forms. So these are some of the documents I have, which are old deeds. Uh, let's get you some nice copper plate script to look at. So this is where some of the research is coming from. Yeah. 
you know, it's, it's parchment and vellum, it's pretty robust. So you don't need to worry about how I treat them. Oh, okay. Now, so look at this, right? Look at this chair and this chair. So if I'm here, look how low I am, and ah, so much better now. The first thing you notice is, let's go back a little bit. Gosh, what an energetic post today. Do you see my shin is perpendicular to the floor? And my, well, they can both be perpendicular to the floor, so I can lean, I can go. Notice I didn't go. Shoulders are back, chest is up. Transverse the abdominals are activated, stomach is in, and I'm pivoting from the hip. So I would lean forward this way. So immediately, I'm in a really good position to work. Now I can feel my belt, and I can feel my t-shirt, and I can also feel it pulling on the back, so I just need to lift the t-shirt up at the back. So I'm going to move to a higher desk that I do research at, And this is where I tend to sit if I'm doing research. Now I've designed the studio in a really specific way. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you like the documents. Uh, you should see the book. Where's the book? Where's the book? Oh, there's the book. So this is a book I found online. This is a letter, an Italian letter from uh, uh, 1765, which was given to me as a present. And then these are, I have to get this book rebound properly. Um, so this book is from 1725. Let me take one of the bigger pages out. So some of the 17th century letter forms that I'm showing you, so some of the 17th and 18th century letter forms I've been working on come from this book. So there are things in here that you can't see anywhere else. A book, a book you see. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. So I, I work here, right? Now, this table is higher. My spine is longer. My arms are longer and my neck, I have an extra vertebrae in my neck. Um, so I, I need a, a higher surface. You need a higher surface as well, or a lower surface. Now, if you're short, um, you might need a box to put your feet on, or you might need two boxes, two separate boxes, so that your feet are flat because the last thing you want to do is put your feet behind yourself because then you're going to fall forward, right? So, so I'm in this position, looking this way, and when I'm doing my research, so this is a book that I'm currently working on. So it's a book of 18th century recipes. And the recipes are really, they're really beautiful. So it's a facsimile of a book from the, uh, from the 18th century. So I would have this book here. I would have my pencil and I would push the chair back a little bit. And, and I, I find myself doing this quite a lot, you know, I sort of shimmy a little bit and I lean forward so that my arm is on the table so I can get that muscular movement. So I know some of you have been following the 17th century, the 17th and 18th century letter forms. So this is page 50, page 61. 
So there's a ton of, of, of information to show you. Um, and it's quite hard trying to find the time to sort of fit the research in and do a live. And now that Facebook has also changed the algorithm, that's, that's a real pain. Um, so I am trying to figure out another way to do it. Maybe just keep it in the PS Grab Calligraphy Classes group and get you guys to join the group and be active in the group. Um, but, but, you know, I'll, I'll let you know how that goes eventually. Right, so I'm working here. I, I am never, I'm never like this. Because if I'm like this, there is no way I can produce these letter forms. And remember, I'm copying letter forms from an historical source book. And that means that I have to have the ability to do larger movements. I naturally think of writing at 55 degrees. So I also have to be conscious that I am not working at 55 degrees. So if I don't have the full scope of movement, I'm going to have a problem. I, I can't show you what, I can't reproduce this accurately out of these documents. So your, your position is, is also really, really important, right? No problem, I'll see you later. Right. So, put everything back. This out, you can stay here. Okay, so I'm going to move this over here. And I'm going to move from my, rese from my research desk to my light table. So I, I, I hope you're I hope you're finding this useful. I hope it, it, it's helping you to, to get a different perspective on how you should be working. Um, you know that those posture placement and position videos that I have on, on, on Shopify are much more expanded and they really go through this kind of detail, as does my PScribe hold and the and my PS scribe muscular movement, which is slightly different from historical muscular movement, which is actually easier. So uh, if you have any questions, please leave the questions either here or, or wait until, you know, I, I posted it to ask the questions there and I'll get back to you on some of the answers, but it might be a little bit easier to, to show you some of those, um, those corrective positions um, while, uh, as a video on here. Okay, so I'm going to move this table. So this is where I sit. Now, I'm on a piano stool, which is pretty high up already. Much more comfortable for my, my legs. I have a, a light, so I can see through my light table. I'm addressing envelopes. I'm sort of going to move this out of the way. And the reason why I decided to do this this live to go through this was because my desk was here. So I was writing, I kept finding that I was, I kept hunching over the writing and I kept feeling really constrained. Now, I have the camera that far away because I want you to see what's happening with my legs. So, one leg is usually back. Again, I've covered all of this in the posture videos. Um, and if I'm, you know, because I'm leaning on my right bum cheek, I eventually have to become aware that I can feel tension because I'm leaning on, because I'm leaning on my right bum cheek. I can feel tension right here at the base of the spine on the right side. 
once the tension starts to build up, I know that I have to go from this leg being back to this leg being forward to the left leg being back. So I shift the weight to the other cheek so that I'm, I'm sort of exercising myself. Um, and this is again one of the reasons why using a dip pen without a cage um, is really important because you can use the dipping as part of the movement so it helps you to, to keep moving. And that movement helps to open up the spine a little bit. You know, when you're using a tool that has ink in it, like I know lots of you use markers and parallel pens, which is great for practice and, you know, and, and good, for, but you, you then have to build in a, a natural break. Whereas if you're dipping, so this is my setup. Uh, this isn't usually here, but sort of lives here because I do a live nearly every day. But this will sit there. The ink sits over there off the table. The list will sit there. I'm working right here, so there's a there's a, a grid here to help me rule up, my, you know, so, so I can see the the lines. Um, and so, what? How I would sit when I'm addressing an envelope? So I, I would sit here. So if I'm doing copper plate script, which is what's on the desk, I would be. Here. Now, notice I'm already here. So yesterday I was thinking, goodness, what, wh why are my letters not as beautiful as I know I can make them? They were, I mean, they were nice, but they weren't stunning. And then I realized, oh, the, the table is really low and I'm slouching. So I'm compressing my shoulders and that compression is causing a problem. So I can't, I can't move easily. So I raised the table. Get this up for a little bit. And for copper plate script, I tend to use just a little angle. So that's a little bit too much. So it's about three degrees. That's too high. So it's just a little too high. Going to go down just a little bit more. That. So, so immediately I'm, I'm upright. I'm in a comfortable position. And and my arm can move. So the the letter forms on the envelopes dramatically changed. And I, I, I and I really started to enjoy doing the writing. So now the thing to consider is um, so, I, you know, I got through the envelopes really beautifully, the tools worked wonderfully, but I started to think, how many of you have this problem? How many of you don't realize that this is so important for you for writing? This is not just about copper plate script, it's about any script. As soon as you're sitting at a desk, this has to be correct before you start writing. Because if you start writing and it's not correct, you're just wasting your time. 
because you'll never be able to produce the letter forms that you're hoping to produce and you will never get them right and you will always complain about the writing because you didn't correct the first few things that you needed to correct. So your posture, your placement, your position, all of this is really important. Um, and the height of the desk is, is, is critical. Otherwise, you're never going to enjoy the writing. You'll always feel constrained and confined and you feel like you're... And, and think about it, you know, are you, are you enjoying it or are you sort of fighting a little bit? If you're fighting a little bit, then it, it, it's probably because you're, you're sort of, you're not in the right position to do the writing. You have to keep up. Now, uh, in, in my classes, lots of students struggle with this and I keep walking around. Those of you who've taken classes with me, I keep walking around the class and I keep saying, sit up, sit up, sit up. And I would go and I would actually push against the lower spine and press you up and lean you forward to get you into the right position. And lots of students say, you know, after an hour of sitting up, you're so tired because you're just not accustomed to sitting correctly to write. But those muscles are supposed to be used in that way. And they eventually get to the point where they start to remember, oh yeah, I'm here, hi, and you start to remember to use them and you can then sit correctly for longer and you can produce better work because you're in the right place you're not hunched over the work and you have free movement which is really really important so um so i hope this is, has, has has helped you um to, to 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 sort of start to think about how you need to change your workspace now, okay, I'm, I'm very lucky that I have a great workspace. You might only be working off a table at home. So the table is where you're working from. How high is the table? So if the table's high, then you need a high chair. If you're short, you have a high table and a high chair, get some boxes to put them there. So if you're tall, and you have a high table and a short chair, get some books to sit on, or put some cushions on the chair so that it raises you. So I have some additional cushions in the studio so when people are coming to the studio for classes, I can vary the height that they're working at. They tend to work at the tables around the studio, which are full of stuff at the minute, but that will change soon. Um, so, um, right, so I'm not really seeing any questions, so I'm assuming that you've all, uh, you all know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, uh, sorry that the, 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 the live is landscape, it's just I needed for you to, to see this in a different aspect, and I also needed to film this in a slightly different aspect so that I could post this onto YouTube um, and uh, Facebook. Um, so it's, 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 it's in the it's in the correct aspect for, for those two platforms. Um, I will post this in the PS Scribe Calligraphy Classes group. Um, so it'll live there. So it'll be great to see some comments um, once the videos are posted. Uh, lots of, a lot to change at my desk, definitely. Uh, glad you like the studio. All habits, serious problem. But you are in charge of that. You can change that. Uh, one of the other things you can do is you can set a, a timer on your phone and that timer will go off maybe every five minutes and you know every time that timer goes off. What, what I tend to get students to do is when the timer goes off, do not move. Stay exactly in the position you're in and then start to deconstruct the position. Am I in the right position? What's going on? And then you start to think, oh, I'm sitting like this, I'm slouching, I'm, I'm really squeezing myself in, um, I'm, I'm, I'm right up in the corner of, of the work, so I'm, 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 not, um, I'm not free enough to work. So by, by 
actually freezing once that timer goes off. You start to think, how did I get into this position? And then eventually you sort of get out of it and then you get back into the right position. And, and, and as you continually do that, you start to recognize what you're doing wrong and you start to be able to correct it. But I've already, I've already told you that sitting cross-legged is terrible. It's a terrible, terrible idea. One of the other things people do is they wrap their foot around the chair. Now, I don't know how people do that. They, they do it to both legs so that they're sort of leaning forward, right? Um, all you have to do is just keep your feet on the floor. You, you, you are responsible for that position. You have to keep that position. Um, you have to keep that position. You have to keep reminding yourself not to do that. One of the things that I found useful was to put my foot against the leg. Now, the only problem with that is, as I've shown you in the posture video, one leg is usually back and the other leg is usually forward. Unless you are doing broad edge work at a slanted board. So again, that's something that I've covered in the video. Um, so if you're working on a slanted board, you know, uh, there's a slanted board. I, I'm not going to tilt this because I've, it's, it's, it's too troublesome to, to move it. Uh, oh, oh, you can go back to where you normally live. Um, where is the slanted board? So I have a few boards in the studio, um, which I probably put back into the, yeah, I think I've already put it back into its, 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 into its box. Uh, let's see if it's out. Um, where is it board? Yeah, I, I think I've already boxed it up and put it away. Um, if the board is, is slanted and it's, it's here, both, both feet should be flat on the floor. Because if one foot is flat on the floor, what you're going to end up doing is holding on to the board. So you're writing, you're writing like this. And ideally you want to be back away from the work so that you can see what you're doing. As soon as you get closer, look at what happens. As soon as you get closer, you start to do this. So you get really tense, you're holding on to the board and you're writing really hard with your fingers. There's, 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 there's no comfort. There's no sort of generosity of space. If you don't have generosity of space, you won't have generosity of movement. Okay, so um, let's see. I'm glad you find that helpful. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Osjoani. Uh, Casey Bear. That's a great idea. I never thought that is uh, that's brilliant. I'm really, really glad. Prolific dreams and art. I'm I'm really glad that that's sort of making you think about this. Chetna, I'm really happy. Trey Nash, br brilliant, brilliant. Tried switch, I uh, tried switching to put it in both the times. Um, right, so notice when you put your feet on the floor, you're not stamping on the floor, you're just resting them on the floor. You could go onto the, just on the little ball, so they're not completely flat, but they're just a little bit tilted. Again, that's something that you have to practice. I know that there are quite a few, um, a few people on from India. One of the issues with quite a few Indian calligraphers is they write sitting cross-legged on the floor. And that, that doesn't really work for broad pen scripts or for pointed pen scripts because you, you do need to be higher up. So even if you're sitting cross-legged on the floor, which you know I wish I could do, I mean, my hamstrings are just, will just not let me do that. Um, you need a table to work at and you need to be at the correct height and the correct height is always dictated by where the elbow touches the desk okay so i think i've 
waffled on about this for long enough. Is it fine to slant your neck? Definitely not. You don't want to do this. Because if you're doing this, then obviously you can't see the page properly. That and that, that, that is, that is problem. That is, that will cause trouble in the neck and the shoulder. And remember, curve here has to create with a corresponding curve down here. So you, that's, that's not how you're supposed to sit to right. You're supposed to be in a straight position. You're leaning forward. You're not leaning onto the work. You know, I see people working like this, and I'm like, well, what's wrong with you? I mean, you can't work like that. You need to sit back away from the work. That's where you should be working. So, um, yeah, be careful with that. Did, did you see how I've, I, I, I had to readjust my table? So it was just a little too high for me. And as soon as I sat down, I knew that was a problem. So, you know, I, I, I've been doing this more than three quarters of my life. And this is the first thing I sort out before I write. And I know for a lot of you, the first thing you do when you write is you get a piece of paper and you write your name. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't do that. The first thing I do when I sit down is I make sure the table is the right height. Make sure my ink is, I actually test it. So when you're seeing me doing a live, my ink is normally here. So it's, it's, you know, I, I don't want to be going all over the place. If I'm doing work, my ink is nowhere near my envelopes. Never. Once that happened and the ink fell over and I had to replace all the envelopes. So that was a problem. Uh, see you, Roxana asked a question uh, it's great to see you too Roxana so immediately um, I work in the middle of my desk I have my blank envelopes here which I pick up with my writing hand I put I pass them to my non writing hand I put them down and I have a technique that I, I, I hold the envelope in place so it's, it's not completely flat. And I write. Then I slip my, slip my, this is why, you know, whenever you see me showing you stuff, I use my fingernail on my little finger. I slip the little fingernail under the envelope and I lift the envelope up with the nail and the thumb. And then I put it into the wrap. And then I pick up, notice, notice what's happening. Huh? I pick this up, hand this over, put this down. Or I pick it up, I try not to do this. And I also make sure there's no ink on the nib. Right? So I pick this up, hand it at the top, put it down, put it in place, do the writing. Now look at this, dip. Notice the ink is far enough away that I'm not just doing that, I'm actually dipping. I'm moving, I'm stretching my back. Move, dip, tap, come back, sit up, lean forward, right, 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 dip. Notice, notice the movement. And then when I'm finished, because the ink would have run out by the time I get to the end of the envelope because I know how much ink I have on my nib. Little finger underneath, lift up, put down. This arm goes down. Notice I'm, I'm moving again. Pick up, put, put into the non-writing hand, put down, put it, adjust to the right line space, dip, tap, Go back to the right, check the address. And so I, 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 I built in a lot of movement to help, um, to help, you know, to help keep myself stretched. And notice as well, I've, I've not, I've not, I've not turned into this. I'm still really nice and tall and I can lean forward, I can lean back. And then when I'm finished, I take the rack, 
and then move the rack. I have a couple of these, swap them to another rack. All right, um, do I do any, uh, let me just look at some of you. Uh, so, Atom writes, I, you know, I, I have lots of different angles that I use for different scripts. So I cover all of that in the posture video. Um, Abdullah, if you if you're leaning when you're writing, that's that's a problem, because that can affect tension in one part of the spine, which you have to correct in the other side of the spine. Uh, so what? I usually keep it in the upper right corner of the paper. What is this? So I no to something <laughs> if you could retype that Basilit, so i can try and understand what you oh I, I think you probably figured it out um hey daniel how are you and you know you can't write quickly and i always tell students if you're writing quickly you're not giving the tool the time to make the shape so when you're looking at the writing, you know, when you look at my writing, my writing is really even and consistent. And it's because I'm allowing the tool the time to produce the shape. If you're writing fast, the nib doesn't have the time to, to create a hairline, to open to the right width, to close to the right width, to make a hairline. You're just sort of plowing along. So you're not going to get that sort of consistency in shape and width and line and so you have to be really careful. Different scripts are written at different speeds as well. Uh, do you have any wrist and arm exercises? So I have those in my, uh, those exercises you can find in the PA scribe tool hold and the PA scribe muscular movement and whole arm movement. I was looking to work from far. Yeah, but every every type of, of, of illustrative work, and I'm sort of lumping calligraphy and illustration, um, requires a slightly different position. Recommend table angle from both pen scripts. They, they differ based on the script. I am right-handed. Yeah, so the camera is back to front because I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm needing to see what I'm doing. I, actually, I could have done it the other way anyway. Um, sorry about that. Uh, oh, that's a good idea. Uh, who, who said that? Uh, Theodore, okay, so I, I, can, I, can, I, I can check that out later. Um, da, 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 I'm glad your mom is happy about the comment. Sorry for the typos. Uh, any recommendations for movement? Spencer. Okay, so again, all of that's covered in the PA scribe tool hold and the PA scribe muscular movement and whole arm movement. Um, that's not really something I can cover here. Um, is sitting in is sitting in different position for different scripts. Yes. So I I use different positions for different scripts. And again, that stuff that I've covered in the posture placement position at the, in the five pre basic. Um, five basic prerequisite videos that I have on Shopify uh, because there's a lot to cover. You know, it's not just if you're working flat, it's if you're working at an angle, what angle you're working at, how much tilt there is, where the legs are. So there's, there's a lot to, to, to think about um, that you have to be conscious of. Uh, otherwise, you know, you, you're just going to be causing problems. You're going to cause yourself a lot of of pain in your shoulder, in your hand, and um, your wrist. You know, there's a, a really typical situation for calligraphers. So pain is here, here, in here. Now watch this. So when you when
when you really get to the point where the pain is a lot, this is where it goes. It goes from here, down the thumb, across the forearm, to the elbow. So you'll get pain along here, in the elbow, up the back of the arm, along the scapular ridge, and up into the neck. So the next thing that happens is, it goes from the back of the neck all the way across the back and then it comes down to this side and then to this side and back up so trust me when you get to that point you have some serious problems and that's how I came up with my videos on posture position and placement because nobody really taught me how to sit Nobody taught me how to hold a tool and that caused so much damage in my hand that I, I, you know, I was given a year to write and that would be it. And so I systematically worked through what causes pain. So you see this, this hold that a lot of you have, this is a problem because that causes way too much tension in the hand. Also, you're using your fingers a lot more than you should be. That's why holding the tool correctly is really, really important. And it also assists in better shape, better structure of letter forms. And if you fall in love with flourishing, then that really helps you with your flourishing. Okay, so I, I, I've sort of waffled on for quite some time. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I hope this has been helpful. And, you know, I hope that this is also going to help you sit down and really think through how you're practicing and how you're sitting and how you're approaching your calligraphy and um, notice I'm I, I since I got into the position at my desk I've not been slouching I'm in a really comfortable place and I'm really happy my body is happy because I am not causing problems so I will repost this uh, on on YouTube and um, those of you watching it on YouTube, I'm not sure because sometimes the quality on YouTube isn't that good. Um, if you're watching it on YouTube, please leave a comment. I'd really love to see, you know, where, where the sort of driver is for people watching it. I will repost it in the Facebook group, PA Scribe Calligraphy Classes, uh, which is my Facebook group. Um, and it's, it's a really important sort of um, document to keep in the group. I'd love to see. I know some of you are members of the group, so by all means, please post comments in there and sort of talk about it. Um, I might sort of talk to the girls, to Jordan and Jillian at Lovely Loops and get them to repost it and maybe see how many other calligraphers will repost it so that, you know, we're trying to, I'm trying to make sure that you are not suffering because I've already done the suffering for you. All right, so thanks very much. Um, oh, when did this all work? <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, thanks very much i'm sorry about the the, the landscape portrait but um the landscape um uh format but um it'll work better when you see it in other formats thanks thanks very much